Hey there, Patapon Sauce fans. Well, uh, you know, I I should probably do this. I so at, at, at this point in time, okay, I slow down. First of all, hi. <laughs> so this is uh, we are. This is the thing for the thing about the thing. You know the one. No, so we did, you know, last year we did this, where we put down every game that I played, and then people try to guess, sort of like, how I like the game, which games did I like the most, with a prize for whoever actually gets it right at the end, you know, or the one that gets us closest to what I genuinely thought about uh, what game I preferred or not. And this year we're doing it again, except this time I'm probably going to make the video results uh, live for everyone else. Because I think people might be interested in what I thought about the various games I played in 2023. Technically this starts with the end of 2022 though. It ends where... Well, it starts where the last, um, the last uh, contest ended. Uh, so I'm not, I'm going to go through the process. I'm going to kind of, you know, kind of do a sort of yearly review, think about it, think about my things and whatnot. It should be a lot of fun. And I think people might be genuinely interested. I, you know, like I said, like to, to form my thoughts around the various games I've played. Uh, before I go, I just want to say, you know, just remember... Yeah, you know, some of these games are like royal, some of these games are very personal to some people. Some of these games, people in the audience may have worked on. I just want to say, even if it does poorly, quote-unquote, like even if it doesn't make it far deep into the tournament, remem remember that uh, the quality of the games that I play are in general extremely high and just because I didn't rate it favorably doesn't mean that it's bad it just means that it was put against a game I like better also maybe some of the seating's not gonna be fair that certainly happened last time last time yeah last time Outer Wild versus um Fury kind of somewhere in the semi-finals but that was supposed to be the end of the of the game you know and it's just kind of funny how that works out. And also, if we go through the list right here, some people may have noticed two games have been omitted. So yeah, Copy Kitty should have been on this contest, as well as Better of Fight 6. And both games were not included. Um, I think it was okay. But Rao Cow, you having to struggle to finally decide which of those two games is the game you like the most. Like, wouldn't that be fun? Isn't it the coward's way not, not to just answer that right now, here and now? Maybe. But here's the thing. Like, I have gone on record saying that Copy Kitty and Bedrified are, like, my two top video games, probably in existence currently with my current experience and what I've played. So I feel like it makes a poor tournament because then every time one of those two games shows up, you would have to be a fool not just make it win. And then at some point you get the copy kitty v betterify and it's like, I don't know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's flipping a coin at that point. Like it's just not fun. It's like imagine you had like a free throw tournament, like just like... Like, a, a local free throw tournament, you know, like, just like all the kids getting around and, you know, tossing the b-ball and, you know, trying to do some baskets. You know, it's for fun. And then, for some reason, due to some magic, the ancient spirits of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were there, in their prime, also participating in that makeshift neighborhood tournament. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, they would just crush everyone. And, like, it's just, like, sure, there's something hilarious about seeing a bunch of amateurs getting crushed. But for the purpose of this, for the purpose of sort of looking at the games together as an ensemble and putting my, 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 um, my thoughts together, I feel like in the end it would result in a worse tournament. So, get out of here, you two. You're too good. I'm not saying that the other games are not too good. I'm not saying the other games are not good, but you, you're you're getting what I'm saying here. 
So might as well talk about them though, right? Before we get started, started, let's talk about those two games. Copy Kitty, I have played finally hard mode the very end of 2022. For the longest time, Copy Kitty and Skullgirls were sort of like my top two video games. They were my top two that I wasn't sure which one would ever like get ahead of the other. But playing hard mode to me solidified Combi Kitty's place because wow is gone. So like Combi Kitty as a whole, I just love the game. I love the mechanics. Uh, it controls extremely well. Uh, it is very fluid what it does, and there is a surprising amount of of uh, level variety. Like over time, you realize there's actually attempts at doing things. There's like stealth gameplay. There's more like shmuppy things. The bosses are a lot of fun. And so you got, like, the, this concept of a hard mode. And, you know, that's all nice and good. You know, you play, you play like, remixes of the, the previous, of, of normal mode. Except things are harder. Except you realize that everything is kind of different. Maps will be mirrored, or you'll be playing through them upside down, or they're gonna be flipped up. Bosses have completely new patterns. And the more you advance through the game, the more this is true until at some point, like, you're basically playing completely different levels, and then, key moment, at the end, you are completely playing completely different games. Where in the Savant end, you got, like, the ROM hack world that happens, and, uh, yeah, the whole interruption during, during, um, during Boki's story, and then, in addition to that, you got like just like the the pose game that opens up, which is uh, completely fantastic. Because even that has a completely different hard mode with a completely different theme, and it's complete. Like even that deep in, you get new mechanics, you get new weapons and power ups. It's wild. It's just wild. It's a game that just does not stop. But like I say that in the best way. It's a never ending, non stop game. Sorry about that. There's gonna be like a really weird interruption, but no, yeah, it, like, it's just such a joy. It's just so good. And like, in the past, several people have said, you know, they've asked me, hey, Rao Cow, if you could make a video game, like, what would you do? Like, like you know, like you got unlimited budget, you suddenly know how to program, and you could make your, 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 your childhood dream game. And the reality is, the game I would do would basically be Copy Kitty. Uh, like, it probably would not look different, I mean, I, the opposite, it would look different, like, stylistically would probably be different, but in terms of gameplay and stuff, I, as a child, I love the idea of, like, these games where you use power-ups, and you mix and match them, like, Kirby 64 to me was like, wow, no, this is so cool, this is so neat. But I wish there was a more action-oriented Kirby 64, instead of being a slower platformer, with, like, more of an emphasis on, like, soft puzzles and uh, exploring. See, I want like a more action based with like, you know, like quick action and like lots of things to dodge and whatnot. And that's it. That's what Copy Kitty is. And it nails it perfectly. And uh, yeah, it is my childhood's game brought to life. And to think that the only reason probably I know it exists is that one day, for no reason whatsoever that I can remember, I went on the SuperMarvelCentral.net non-hack personal project display thing, I don't know how to call it, which I never go to. It's just like, that's the one time I went there, and I saw Copy Kitty, and I saw the thumbnails, and I was like, hey, that looks pretty nice. And then a random week happened, and I played Copy Kitty, and... History turned a switch. We went through a very particular format of the story of the universe. And, uh, yeah, no, I absolutely love it. I still love it. I'm kind of sad and I'm basically done with everything. Though, I, I mean, I could go for endless runs. I could go for pandemonium runs. Like, I only got one uh, form of pandemonium and apparently it's a really, really restrained version. You never know, but no, yeah, no, yeah, Copy Kitty. It, the name is a pun. <laughs> you get it? 
And on the other end of the spectrum, we got butter of butterified. We got betterified six Colin bestified. Man, I I don't know. There's there's all that much to say. Again, like I know some people don't agree with me with that one. I know that the fact that a game is repulsed by the idea of getting 100% is a big no for a lot of people. And I respect that. Uh, but it's important to remember that what I'm going to be going on about here today, about this game and about every other game I'm going to talk, none of this is even close to being objective. This is 1,000% subjective. Me, my thoughts, my taste. I'm aware of it, and I'm hoping y'all are also aware of it. Um, best, Betterified 6, I think, is just nail, nails my taste. It is genuinely really funny. It is able to use running gags with a deftness and a preciseness that you really just don't see done on the internet. Even outside on the internet, like just in anything like at all. Just repeating a running joke just often enough. And just spaced out enough. And it's genuinely funny. And it's super clever. And like, it is... The way that it plays with your expectation of what is a Mario game, and sometimes just like a free game, a fan game, ROM hacks and Smebex episodes separately, it knows that you know about these and is just going to play around with that like a lot. I love that there are things that lead nowhere. I've said this during the LP, but you know, like a game like La Mulana, it's a big old puzzle. But everything you read, everything you see, you kind of get a hint that that's going to matter. So it's going to be important. Keep that in mind. Verified 6 is not afraid to just have something lead to nothing. And so then you don't know what matters. You don't know what is important. And that makes when something clicks as being important all the stronger. I love the weird meta narrative. I love how most of the game is repurposing of pre-existing levels. It is just completely mad with sampling. And I love that. I love, 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 love that. And, you know, like, I love... There's no better word for it. It's just, I love the shitpost aesthetic. I don't know. This is something I feel like I've discovered about myself recently it's something i genuinely love and um it works it just works so well and then at the end of it all you know sometimes sometimes someone's like hey i'm gonna make an actual mario level in this and it's some of the best mario i've ever played most of the grand majority of the bosses are absolutely fantastic and like mario it's hard to make a mario boss it is genuinely difficult because mario's just not really suited for that and they did it and they did it and it's so good i and i feel like one of the prime thing is that they didn't try to make the game super hard i think they really wanted the game to be more about what it had to say its humor its environments they want to show things. They wanted to show snippets of stories. And I think they didn't want difficulty to get in the way. And I respect that. Like, the game will show its fangs in the end game. It exists. But for the majority of the time, like, it's never free. But also, you know, like, it, 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 it won't just punish you for no reason. And it's extremely smart. Like, in spite of seeming like like just like a big old shit post of my complete nonsense that hides the fact that it's honestly designed extremely carefully and the craftsmanship is like just very very precise and it's just so good it's just so good it's absolutely fantastic uh it wasn't that long ago since i was just gushing over it this is just some more gushing 
Here we be gushing. That was the gush. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is not part of this tournament. So let's get let's get started. I'm just gonna go in order. So for, so it looks like most started here, but it's like there's a four of them that have like an anti buy. They have to start early. I I guess because of the numbers. That's fine. Which one is this? Oh, you can stop and it's gonna tell you eventually. Eventually. Okay, so that's the Wii version, which is fine. And mega. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Starting with the. Um, I'm gonna be real. This might come as a shock. I'm gonna take you. Uh, mega and X DLC for Minecraft is fine. It's a really silly game, but structurally, it's all over the place. It's neat, but I need to give credit for the Wii version of the Winter Olympic Games because it made me realize that, wow, actually, a lot of these games are genuinely fun. And if it weren't for my control complications for some of the game, I probably would have liked the game even more, but like a lot of the racing games just end up being fundamentally pretty fun. And with the emphasis on the dream courses, which could kind of let them do anything, it basically almost becomes a Mario and Sonic, like, Mario Kart game. And it... I genuinely enjoy it. And playing that game made me realize, you know what? Now I'm looking forward to the rest of the Olympic games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we, we saw where that land. All right, that is just. Uh, I'm. This is not a contest. Sonic Unleash Mobile is barely functional. It's fine, but oh, I'm the Java version was barely functional. Is the Java is is? Uh, I'm just, just looking real quick. Yeah, I think they just put it all together. But yeah, the other one was okay, but no, it was still bad. It was, it was fine. Like, it, it it destroyed expectations, but it's just, Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean much. Okay, so three. A cute indie game that, you know, uh, with a pretty soft touch in its gameplay, but going pretty hard on the story. Versus a game that single-handedly destroyed a running series for uh, on its fourth year of age. Hmm. I wonder which of these is going to win. Wow. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I don't need to talk say anything else about... Ish. <laughs> they, I don't need... That was a buy, basically. That was... You know, like I said, I don't want to bash. When I talk about these games, I want to try to talk about the good parts as much as possible. I just want to go and be, hey, check it out, it's me, Bashy the Video Game. I like to bash games. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Um, so, here we are. <laughs> I don't know how to finish that. I'm just not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm sure at some point I'm going to start talking about things I like less about games. When I have to compare, like, games I like a lot, but... Let's just forget that one exists. Adventure Island versus Mafab the Third. Um... Adventure Island Endgame is unplayable. Make a Fun Awesome Boss 3 had also somewhat... Had some rough spots. Uh, some very difficult bosses, but overall... It was, like, such a joy to play. I feel like I'm going to talk about it more when I start to compare it to other games. But it just... I feel like just Adventure Island versus Mafab 3. It, it's not a contest. Adventure Island is fine. It's an old game that controls bad. Uh, this, eh. And things just get absolutely ridiculous at the end. Truly lives. Like, you can tell it has arcade roots in the worst way. <laughs> Okay, but now we are here. The real thing. I mean, again, this is just... Yeah, Winter Olympics, pretty cool. Gravity Circuit wins, though. <laughs> Gravity Circuit was so good. Gravity Circuit was so good. More on that when I have to compare it to thing. 
Oh, that's interesting. A plumber for all seasons versus Sonic and Black Knight. I mean, okay, no. Plumber wins. Um, Sonic and the Black Knight, though, I ended up liking a lot more than I thought I would. But, uh, especially once I found the legacy stages, I thought that was so cool. Except the only good legacy stage was the first one. The rest were all kind of barren and weirdly empty. I, I do not regret my time with Sonic and the Black Knight. But, uh, also I cannot say that I've had the proper full experience of it. Because I was not using, uh, proper Wii controls. And a lot of that game is waggling. So, you know, I, I still liked it. I did not like King Arthur. I thought that fight was trash. And A Plumber for All Season has no equivalent of that. So, there you go. Kirby's Return to Dream. Oh, boy, that's a hard one. I'm going to skip it for now. That's too hard. Um... <laughs> really? I, no, I... <sighs> Kirby... Hmm... I have to give it to Return to Dreamland. Here's my reasoning. Banjo 2 is a game of my youth. I liked it a lot. There are parts that I feared that I remember not liking as a kid, but turns out they weren't that bad. Uh, Grunty's industry in its entirety, basically. But Pterodactyl Land, turns out, was a bit worse than I remembered. And the ice side of Hellfire Temple, I did not, I did not enjoy myself. I was constantly getting lost in a way that I really didn't feel it. I really didn't enjoy it. Like, I just... You could tell near the end. I got some real Banjo-Tooie fatigue. Um, it's a big game, but it's too big for its own good. It's, it, it's big for the sake of being big, not because Rare needed to have it big, I feel like. That's my... It's because it's unfortunate because the first few worlds of Banjo-Tooie are excellent because they're a bit more restrained. So you go a thing, you do a thing, you're rewarded, move on. And it turns out that's really good. Layering your rewards with busy work does not. Uh, man, I am getting already a little bit more uh, negative, huh? That's why that's the part I don't like about this. But Curry Dreamland, Return to Dreamland, never played before. Had a had a had a blast. We'll see how it measures up with either chocolate level design 2020, right? Or God Hand. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't remember anything from cho chocolate level design 2020. I do so chocolate level design 2020 is the first thing I did after breaking apart ATS. When I was like, all right, whatever. I'm giving myself my own slot, which ended up being a temporary thing, but I gave myself my own slot. And uh, Chocolate Level Design 2020 was something I was sitting on for two years. I wanted to do it, three years even. And I did it. And I remember enjoying myself, but I don't remember anything. I remember, no. Yeah. And you could say, well, Alcal, why don't you go and look at your old footage to look at that, re remind yourself a little bit. No, I'm not going to do that. If I don't remember it, I feel that has to be, that has to mean something, right? God Hand was... Here's the thing with God Hand. I love God Hand, but I, uh, there's also, like... Fighting in God Hand is fantastic. It's some of the best fighting that exists out there in video game form. Everything else is, just, in terms of control, is weird. Like, it's so strangely stiff. It's like, just move. Like, moving around to where you want to go. Just aiming for the guy you want to aim. No, yeah, I remember that being a butt. All right, fine. I'm going to look through the... It's, I'm going to look just through the playlist. Yeah, okay, no, yeah, so as I, I, I just kind of went through the playlist, not watching any videos, but just kind of reminding me what was there, and yeah, I'm going to give it to uh, over God Hand, because God Hand is good at one thing. Everything else around it, I felt like felt apart. This is, this is, you know what, I feel like it's not a fair thing to say, because I genuinely think it was a 
great time. I just did not work for me in in every in every say. It's really funny. It's very varied. But then you know, child level design that was also very varied. It was really good. Like like I said, like going back through just the name of the levels and like the thumbnails and whatnot. It came back. It it came back. I wish God Hand could have made it further in the contest, but I cannot justify it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God Hand fans. Uh, I I love that game, but it's just it's just not doing it. Paper. Oh boy. I enjoyed what Paper Mario was doing for me. But I kept butting heads with the RPG-ness of it. At some point, I got bored of the fights. Like, in the latter half, like, latter third, latter fourth, I feel like at some point you just constantly get fights with enemies, and it's just the same thing all the time. Like, yeah, they add a little gesture. Like, there's input commands and whatnot. But again, it's just kind of the same thing all the time. Without cow, you should have used your powers more, or you should use item that would have added variety. Yeah, but it's still a long series of fights where it's just selecting things in a menu. Like I, 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 that got in the way for me. Like this is the RPG ness of Paper Mario gone away. Like I was able to enjoy the craftsmanship. I enjoyed like the flavor, the writing. The setup, the scenery, um, the bosses were fun because they were unique, because they were doing specific things. But, oh no, like, I I was getting pretty tired about just the RPG-ness of the RPG fights in that RPG, which is a fine thing to have, and I know some people genuinely enjoy them. That was not the case for me. This might be a surprise for some people. Um... It's not a surprise for me, though. <laughs> I am not surprised by what I just gave there. No, yeah, no. I really like it, but it's just... Versus a uh, traditional platformer. Uh, especially if I focus on, like, revenge, and I just kind of forget 3 is there. Um, so is it fair to say that I'm just forgetting that 3 is there? I don't know. It's what I'm doing. Messenger versus <laughs> Mega Man Legends 2. Messenger was a more complete thing. And Mega Man Legends 2, I also felt, just kind of fell apart. Remember that weird long cutscene with Hippie Jesus? That was weird. It kind of didn't go anywhere all that much. <sighs> Mega Man Legends 2 is trying to tell a story, and I feel like it doesn't know how. A whole bunch of people just talking to each other. And because there's voice acting, you kind of have to wait after it. And I didn't enjoy it. And the Water Temple. Oh, boy. I know there's people in the audience who enjoyed playing the Water Temple. You know what? Fantastic. Good for you. I did not. I did not. I also, I think, like Mega Man Legends the first more than I like the second. I don't think that is a very... Um, that's what I'm looking for. Controversial take or anything, too. Fragile Dreams versus Cuphead DLC. Man, I feel like Cuphead DLC just kind of came and went, right? Like, just no one really talked about it. Just like, I'm playing it. All right. I'm done. Moving on. Fragile Dreams, farewell. It was very different for, you know, the kind of games I played. I enjoyed it for what it is, but Cuphead, I enjoyed more for just for what it is. I, I had a lot of fun with Cuphead. I thought Cuphead DLC was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so yeah, sorry, Fragile Dreams. There are contests you could have won, but not against Cuphead. Just out of sheer emotional, I had funness. Because Fragile Dream is more like reflective, I guess, as an experience. There's also just kind of a lot of move, shuffling around. I don't know. Item management. I'm not a fan. I understand why they did it. Doesn't make me a fan. I get it. It's all good. Blast Core versus Mirror's Edge. Huh. Gotta be real. I'm tempted to give it to Mirror's Edge. 
Blast Core, I love that game. It's a weird little puzzle game. It does kind of weird little things, but Mirror's Edge is kind of unique. It's all, it's a menu, like it's almost so a pseudo puzzle game. It's a space navigational game in a way that was really fun. And uh, yeah, I started to do wall jump U-turns kind of late in, but I eventually did. Shooting is bad, but whatever. It's, you don't need to shoot all that often. Like a lot of the time, it's yeah, how do you minimize your interaction with uh, fighting? I don't know, figure it out. That's part of the game. Blast Core is a game I chose from, it was, it was in the R zone. I want to relive my nostalgia and uh, I got my nostalgia. I had a lot of fun, but I think that all things equal, I think I preferred my experience with Mirror's Edge. So there you go. WarioWare versus Nico. Um, one of these games, I have found an excuse to keep playing as a, <laughs> that's an intermission, so <laughs> that says a lot. Uh, Here Come Nico is a, an interesting game, I feel like. However, uh, like, it, okay, Here Comes Nico controls like a dream. It controls really well. It is very satisfying to move around. And so the it has levels that are basically asking you to kind of move around. It's the repetitiveness of tasks, though, is unfortunate. And, uh, yeah, I love the graphic style. Uh, 2D, like, stickers in a 3D environment was, like, they made it look really, really nice. That was really, really cool. Um, but I just got more out of WarioWare. Like, this is the reality. <laughs> Vangers versus Ape Escape. Vangers might win the whole thing. I don't know yet. Escape is really cool, though. Like, it's really solid. Honestly, like, you know, if the contest was a much more similarly matched Ape Escape and Banjo-Tooie, I feel like I would give it to Ape Escape. It's really neat. It's a really cool collectible where the collectibles are also your main adversary. That's just smart. Like, that's just smart game design that you just don't really see done all that often. And it's really rad. And it controls very well in spite of me sometimes getting my thumb tied. Because it is all about a dual, uh, dual joystick. But Vangers is special. It's a game... I, how did I describe it back during the Let's Play? It's the game that I hate that I love the most. And that is still true. Vangers had an impact on the spot zone, like something else. I've never seen a game introduce so much, like, vocabulary to to the forum momentarily. There was a point of time where everything was about beebs and gorbs. No other game has done that. <laughs> Better fied with Wowie Spider. But my point is, Vanger is something. It is. So, I'm sorry, Ape Escape. So, again, I, I love playing that game. But I love playing that game. Vangers, I, it's the experience. I hated playing that game. But overall experience around it. I just, no. Like, it just... I will remember Vangers in 20 years. That's just the reality. Super Sammy Roll versus Klonoa. Klonoa, pretty solid platformer the whole way through. Super Sammy Roll, pretty funky, weird platformer that falls apart in the ice world. <laughs> Super Sammy Roll is really neat. It just gets way too hard for its own good. Like, it just trips over itself. That's just the that's just way it is. There's nothing else I feel like I have to say. Sammy itself as a character is adorable. It also controls like a bar of soap. So, huh, huh, huh. Arhack versus Sonic 4s. I have to give it to Arhack. Sonic 4 1 is weirdly eh, but I feel like they were trying a bit more with the second one. But they are a package deal. And Arhack. Arhack was neat. Honestly, I feel like Arhack was a good way to sort of prep myself for what would be better if I a little bit later down the year. It doesn't push as hard into full uh, meta ness. But also, I don't think they were trying to do that. Like, it's just... 
you know, a pseudo unofficial unauthorized sequel to Yump. And that they nailed it. Like there's a level that's a full like mini hack. Like they still do things like that. There's the play by three text playthrough. That was super good. The with with a weird camera level. The 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 one of the final bonuses is letting you glitch the score with wigglers. Like that is super fun. It should have had unlimited lives though. I'm gonna still I'm gonna stand by that. There's a map that's just a cat. Arg is really good. You know what? The more I think about it, Arg is really good. Cave Story versus Mafab 3. Mafab 3, the first Mafab that is alone and on its own, so separate from uh, the Magalexa, so that next time we can have Magalex and Mafab 4 together and not have the weird division in names that makes it awkward. That was a really good, good experience. There was like some fantastic bosses in there. The intro bosses was like really, really good. Like, I still have memories of, like, that Electro Box boss that I struggled a bit with. It was really cool. There's that Sparky Sun boss that just, like, there's this whole story that gets told. That was super awesome. Um, there's that hand boss that gave me a lot of trouble and I cheated. And all that versus Cave Story. Completely different thing. Single author the grandfather of the current indie game movement the proof of what you can accomplish when you're on your own but there's a bit of a Seinfeld effect to Cave Story where like nowadays like a lot of what it does newer games that were inspired by its elements have just done it better over time right and while it might not be like the fairest thing to say um, I mean, that's just how I experienced it. It's really solid. It's really cute. It's really neat. I really like some of the guy dang it puzzles. But I think I have to give it to MathFam. Maybe that's heresy. Hey, maybe it is. Hero Core versus Death Wish. I like Death Wish. Asterisk. But I like Hero Core, no asterisk. Ah, uh, some of the death are just too hard. They're like this, this is flat out. Like it's a hard mode for people who spent the years between a hat and time and a hat and time death wish, who just kept playing, 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 keep playing, keep playing it. I am not that guy. I'm not that person. And you know, I could feel it. It was a real struggle throughout the whole thing. I'm glad when I did. But, you know, like, at some point I hit my limit. And, you know, that's just kind of a bummer. Like, it's not fair to say for the game. But it was just kind of a bummer. Uh, I love what I played of it. But uh, my overall experience, I feel, with Hero Core was a lot more positive. Castlevania 4 versus Strider and Nozman. That is interesting. So I'm going to lean mostly with Strider when talking about this, naturally. Versus Super Castlevania 4. Two games from my childhood and I played for nostalgia. One was really... one. Both have, like, fantastic sprite work. Um... Hmm. I think I'm going to give it the Strider. See, this might be recency effect. And this is just a thing. Like, I, it's not something I can fight, really. But... It's weird, because I feel like I remember Super Castlevania 4 being harder than it was. When it turns out, like, yeah, I died a few times. Like, that's for sure. But it was like a bit of a walk through a lot of it. And it's very impressive at what it does. It's a fantastic game. But I feel like Strider got a bit more out of me. Man, I went through emotions through Strider. <laughs> that game put me through the ringer. And, uh, but beating it, actually getting a 1cc done. Now that felt fantastic. And it's like, is that fair for Super Castlevania 4? Absolutely not, but uh, <laughs> that's how it was seated. 
Nine Years of Shadow versus Super Winterloot. Uh, so that was part of the advent of last year versus Nine Years of Shadow. Beautiful Metroidvania, fantastic bosses. I love the elemental planes with the paths in between all those great sections feeling like a weird amount of filler. The game should have been a linear game. It would have been a better game if it was a linear game where you had built levels around your power-ups, ended with a boss, moved to the next one. It would have been a better experience. Uh, never before had something felt like filler. <laughs> Not true, Benjo Tui, but you get what I'm saying. And I don't like saying that, but like that's just the reality. And it's unfortunate. Beautiful game. Like I said, the boss fights are... I thought the boss fights were fantastic. They were super great. I just wish more of the game was like the boss fights. At the end of the, oh, that's not a scroll wheel? All right, I guess. Well, we fill this up at some point. It's going to bring out the new things. Gravity Circuit versus a Plumber for All Season. I'm going to give it to Gravity Circuit. A Plumber for All Season is a fantastic game. It's a beautiful Super Nintendo game. Not just from her. Beautiful Super Nintendo game outright. Really good, very solid level design. It tests you. It's never free, but you know, it also shows restraint. It wants to be played by, by people. It wants, it's a game that wants to be played. And that makes it very good. Gravity Circuit, however, I feel like it is just like raw fun. I really, really love my time with Gravity Circuit. I wish it was longer, but I understand the length it has. I love Gravity Circuit and I'm giving it the win here. Uh, why Yoshi Egg, I don't know if you're going to see this, but I mean it. Plumber Fall Season was just very, very good. I had a great time with that game. All right? All right? Good. Uh, Turn to Dreamland versus Level Chocolate Design. That one's hard. I don't know on what axis to compare them. Huh. Which one did I enjoy the most? This is gonna go down to, because this is a contest, there are levels that I just did not care for. Whereas I cared for for a lot of Kirby, including playing the extra game. So yeah, like, I feel this is what's going to happen to a lot of contests at, at some point. Like, if I just kind of mentally evaluate my whole experience, the fact that in a level design contest, you're going to have the lower rung, that's going to bite it, unless the upper rung are like, just like, the absolute best things that ever were. But if I was, that was the case, I feel like I would remember them a little bit better, you know? And that's unfair, maybe. But I just feel like, logically speaking, Return to Dreamland is just a more solidly built everything. Because it is a solidly built everything and not a grab bag of several unrelated things that carry the same banner. Uh, Messenger over Bonk. Bong, I, I had a lot of fun. Bong's Revenge. Like, I willingly replayed the whole game after emptying my, my continues. But again, looking at it through the total package, Bong's 3 is... I did not have a good time. Bong 3 felt bad. Bong 1 was the middle ground. There's just something about 3. It just doesn't work. It's just... They went too hard on the yucks and not hard enough on just making levels that hold together. Messenger, I felt, you know, that's a game about levels. That's a game with level design. Why, uh, Messenger... Messengers just keep kind of moving forward without me really talking about it. That's fine. Mirror's Edge versus Cuphead. Cuphead wins. Um, I, li I really, really like Mirror's Edge. I like Cuphead more. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> I'm leaving this for last. Let's do the other ones. Uh, Strider versus Winterlude. I'm gonna give it a Winterlude. That's not fair though. That's a game that was made for me specifically. Yeah, well, it holds together pretty well. Um, 
That's just kind of the funny thing about this format, because I feel like I would give Castlevania maybe over Winterlude, but I would give Strider over Castlevania. We've got ourselves a triangle of weapons here. That's how it penned out. Uh, Mafab or Hero Core? That's a good one. That's a good question. Huh. Mafab or Hero Core? Because Mafab, unlike Chocolate the Design Contest, whatever, like there is a thing that ties it together. There's a very silly excuse story that works. And, like, it works. Like, it does. There's a way to put it all together. And also, the lower rung of MathApp 3 were actually, like, pretty all right. Like, it starts with, like, funny jokes. Like, uh, uh, yeah, the warping boom boom was really good. Oh. Hero Core was very neat. But I did struggle a lot against some of the bullet hell aspect. But the hand boss. Ah, uh, yeah, no kidding. The hand boss in math. Do I give it to Hero Core? Let me sleep on this for a little minute. Clonar or Arahak? Oh, all three of these are hard. I don't want to answer though. <laughs> I have to give it to Arahak. Clono is cute, and it's adorable. It controls very well. Like, it does very fun things. But being a more modern game made by a bunch of people who can, are allowed to just do whatever, our act just resonated personally more with me. I feel like Klonoa resonates with the me of the past in a way that our hack resonates with the me of the present. And it's the me of the present that's making this here. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Vangers or WarioWare? WarioWare is cool, it's neat, it's really funny, it's very um, creative. But you don't get an emotional pull to WarioWare, no where Vanger does. That's not fair though. Games don't typically do that. Yeah, well, who cares? <laughs> That's what I want, apparently. Oh boy, okay. No, no, yeah. Like WarioWare is entertaining and it's fun. And I love doing WarioWare as the intermission. But Vanger's gets inside you in a way that just video games just don't do frequently period <sighs> math fab hero core man i didn't expect that to be such a stumbling block because i feel like in my brain they're kind of equal I'm gonna give it to Mathab. So how do I do the rest? Is there a side scroll? Like how do there's more? Oh, okay, you gotta like side scroll. That is weird website oh. <laughs> We're at the semi and the finals though. Okay. Um, okay. Gravity Circuit versus Kirby. I'm giving it to Gravity Circuit. There we go. Uh, I don't know. That one was kind of... I love Kirby. I love my experience with Kirby. I love my experience with Gravity Circuit. I feel like Gravity Circuit, I just had more fun. Like, it's just... It's a... Honestly... <laughs> Gravity Circuit, I had a lot of fun with. I thought Gravity Circuit was fantastic. 
I think that the finale is Gravity Circuit versus Vangers. Love Kirby, but it is Kirby. Gravity Circuit was like an elevated form of, 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 uh, like, it's just Kirby. It's fantastic Kirby, but it is Kirby. I think the superpowers are super fun. They're super awesome. You just, but Gravity Circuit is just the way it lets you play. It makes you make choices. Like, you know, I could just give myself a double jump pretty early on, and then I chose not to have it anymore because it made me sort of stop using the chain, and I loved using the chain. The bosses are all fantastic. They're super cool. Gravity Circuit just touched me in a way, just a little bit more, and that's just what it is. Messenger versus Cuphead. I have to give it a Cuphead. Messenger, I had a lot of fun with it. Like, I thought it's really cool. It took me a little bit to get used to the game's humor. But I thought it did a great job at it, you know? Like, um, it was a lot of fun, though. It was, it's very, very precise sort of platforming. The time traveling gimmick, it does, it's not really time traveling. It's more like warping between two worlds, let's be honest. But it's still done really good. It's done really fun. I felt like the bosses were not best things like the punch out boss and the dlc was great the race was the, the dlc bosses were all fantastic but yeah if i have to like nickel and dime every little faults i feel like cuphead ends up ahead vangers versus R i don't know <laughs> five versus winter interlude see that's just not fair Again, because Winterlude was made for me. It was a Christmas gift. Well, it was winter theme. It was really funny. There's some really clever things. I remember the bullet level. That was weird. The sand level, like the, the leaf level, rather, and all that. There was a lot going on. And, and Mafab is closer, so I kind of remember it a bit more. You know what? I said at some point in a contest that this did not need to be... Um, Rational at any point. It is entirely subjective. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, there are two Smebex games. So, one of them has a bunch of clever, weird little levels. The other has a bunch of clever, weird little bosses. They're very... There's a lot of... It's very event. It's very, like, in your face. Oh, honestly, I might have to give it to Mafab. All right, changed my mind. I gave it to Mad Fam. Yeah, in spite of you know, Super Ben Winterlude was was a great time, but I just feel like Mad Fam just had that extra push, you know, that extra little mmm. So yeah, our hack. I love that hack. I love our hack. I think it's fantastic. But Vanger is is a monster. That's what it boils down to. It is an emotional monster. Gravity Circuit over Cuphead. It's... There's more of it. And it's held together, I feel like, in a way that has just really touched me. In a way that I would not necessarily have expected. And yeah, this is Vanger. I don't know... Ah, oh, what's that? What do you do? What, what, there was a thing here. I need to like... Oh, it's just match details. What just happens if you do that? Nothing. So do I then just decide who's the winner? Like, how does that work? Oh, you can click and drag, by the way. I didn't know that. Like, where do you pick your winner? You click it? Because, like, how how did the people who, like, fill this out, how, how did you decide a winner? Maybe when you... Ah, select the tournament winner, you would do that here. 
Got it. Okay. <laughs> See, I was just doing that to distract myself so I didn't have to choose. One of them is, in terms of gameplay, absolutely fantastic. I love playing it. I love the flavor. I thought it was funny. It was entertaining. Uh, it's a lot of really quick action emphasis on battles while also hiding things in a clever way. Well, one of the games I hate the day-to-day -day playing of it. <laughs> but I love the world. I love the story. I love the writing. I love everything it does that is not playing the game. And I loved it so much to overpower a lot of the other games I play this year. Like, I love that game that I hate. But... With Gravity Circuit, I love that game that I love. And, like, ultimately... I think I have to give it to Gravity Circuit. I don't know if I would have been able to have predicted that at the start of it. But yeah, no, Vanger, great game. I love that game. But the reality is, while I will always remember Vanger's and the experience of playing it, I'm Gravity Circuit is still very fresh in my mind. That was 1000% positive all the way around. Not true. I struggled with my first real boss. But afterwards, everything went like spit and shiny. Remember? Remember? Gravity Circuit boss, I was like, hey, stop checkpointing. <laughs> that was my first instant of being mad at checkpointing bosses because I wanted to play the whole thing. That's the first time it happened. And I think that's meaningful. Well, there you go. I did it. I sorted this out some way or another. And the reality is, if you ask me to do this again in a week, I bet that some of my answers would be different. So, you know, don't take these results too personally. Uh, this is just a way to just sort of like see where my head's at that. at this moment in time. That's what I'm feeling about the various game I've played, is, is that instead of ranking them in one of those, oh, I'm going to rank all the games I play, then you got like uh, S, A, B down to F, so whatever. Yeah, that's what normies do. Real people make a fighting game challenge.com <laughs> matching sort of tournament, and you rate them that way. This way, you know, you know the real winners. See, you got, you got top, but then you got, this is like S. This is like A, B, but that's not fair. That is super not, that is not true. I don't think, the vast majority of the games I play, the reality is they're A games at the very bottom. Like, you know, with some exceptions that I played more out of obligation than anyone really wanting me to play, to play them. That's the reality. But no, yeah, I am very happy with, the vast majority of games I played, which is why a lot of these decisions are so hard to make. Like, how do you compare some an A++ experience with another A++ experience? That's when you got to get really weird, weirdly, like, just fidgety and just kind of, like, really just kind of almost unfair. But that's the way things go. Um, yeah, so, hey, I'm going to send this to Pizza. And, um... And so he can sort this out, and then at some point in a few days, the cons is going to be over. And remember, whoever got the closest to the canon order of video games, as declared by me right now, uh, you're going to win a chance to pseudo-royal me uh, using the bucket list, unless you nail it. Unless you correctly predicted every single one of my choices here, in which case we'll get a proper royal. I don't know if anyone ever in the history of forever will ever win that. I mean, it depends. There was a lot of games this year, too. Like, look at that. 35? 35 games. 37, because two of them are not even a year. That is a lot of games. Wow. All right, well, I'm done. End of video.